Python's power comes from its extensive libraries. These libraries make Python a go-to language for data science, machine learning, and more. Let's explore some of the most popular ones used in data science. We're going to talk about three key libraries, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. NumPy is great for numerical operations, Pandas for data manipulation, and Matplotlib for data visualization. These libraries form the backbone of data science workflows in Python. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to use these libraries to manipulate data, perform complex calculations, and visualize your results. Before we dive into each library, let's talk about what a Python library is. In Python, a library is a collection of modules and packages that allow you to perform a wide variety of functions, from mathematical operations to data visualization, without having to write everything from scratch. The Python community has developed thousands of libraries, but today, we're focusing on three of the most widely used ones in data science, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. To start using these libraries, you first need to install them if you haven't already. You can do this using pip. Let's go ahead and do that. Once installed, you can import these libraries into your Python environment. Here's how you do it. Let's start with NumPy, which stands for Numerical Python. NumPy is the foundational package for numerical computing in Python. It provides support for arrays, matrices, and many mathematical functions to operate on these data structures efficiently. So, what can we do with NumPy? Let's find out. In NumPy, the most important object is the ND array or n dimensional array. It's similar to a list, but with additional functionality. Here's how you can create a simple array. Arrays can be multidimensional as well. Here's an example of creating a 2D array. One of the great features of NumPy is its ability to perform element-wise operations. Let's say we want to add 10 to every element in our array. We could do it like this. You can also perform other operations like multiplication, division, or even more complex operations like trigonometric functions, logarithms, and so on. NumPy also comes with a host of built-in functions that make life easier. For example, you can calculate the mean, median, or standard deviation of an array with a single line of code. You can also create arrays filled with zeros, ones, or even random numbers, which can be extremely useful when you're initializing arrays for computations. All right, that was a brief overview of NumPy. There's a lot more to it, but these basics should get you started. Now let's move on to our next library, Pandas. Pandas is a high-level data manipulation tool built on the NumPy package. It is mostly used for data analysis and data preprocessing. Pandas introduces two new data structures to Python, series and data frame. A series is like a column in an Excel spreadsheet. It's a one-dimensional array that can hold any data type. Let's create a simple series. Here we have created a series of five elements with their corresponding index values. An int 64 represents the data type of the elements. Series are labeled by an index, which is similar to the row labels in a spreadsheet. You can customize this index too. A data frame is a two-dimensional array, similar to a table in a database or an Excel spreadsheet. It is one of the most commonly used data structures in data science. Let's create a data frame. The output of the code is a pandas data frame object. It shows the columns and rows of the data frame, with each row representing an individual and each column representing a specific attribute of the individuals. Pandas makes it very easy to manipulate and analyze data in data frames. You can select a single column, filter rows, or even perform aggregate functions like sum and mean. Pandas also provides functions to read data from and write data to various file formats like CSV, Excel, and SQL databases. Here's how you can read from a CSV file and write back to a new CSV file. We have this customer CSV file having 10 records. We are reading this CSV file and writing back to a new data CSV file. As we can see, the file named new data got created with the same data. Pandas is incredibly powerful and is a must know for anyone working with data in Python. Next, we're moving on to our third library, Matplotlib for data visualization. Matplotlib is the most popular library for creating static, animated, and interactive visualizations in Python. It provides an object-oriented API that allows you to embed plots into applications. Let's see how it works. Let's start with a simple line plot. 
We'll plot the ages from our pandas data frame. In the output, we can see the plot of the ages of individuals. The x-axis labeled name at the bottom displays the names of the individuals from the data frame's name column. The y-axis labeled age on the left side displays the ages of the individuals from the data frame's age column. We can see the line connecting the ages, the data points, of each individual with their corresponding names. The plot also has the title age of individuals at the top. Bar charts are another common type of plot, especially when comparing categorical data. Here's how you can create a bar chart using Matplotlib. All other information is same, it just changed the type of the chart. Histograms are used to represent the distribution of numerical data. Let's create a histogram of some random data. The output shows a visual representation of the distribution of the 1,000 random numbers. The x-axis represents the value of the data, likely ranging from several standard deviations below the mean, zero, to several standard deviations above. The y-axis represents the frequency on a numerical scale. Each bar shows how many data points fall within the corresponding value range on the x-axis. Scatter plots are used to observe relationships between variables. Here's an example of a scatter plot. The output shows a scatter plot where each data point is represented by a purple circle. The position of each circle on the plot is determined by the corresponding values in the x and y arrays. The x-axis and y-axis are likely range from zero to slightly less than one, depending on the random values generated. There are 50 data points plotted. The horizontal position of each circle corresponds to a value in the X array, and the vertical position of each circle corresponds to a value in the Y array. Since the data points are randomly generated between zero and one for both X and Y, the circles are somewhat scattered across the plot with no specific pattern. Matplotlib provides a lot of flexibility in how you can visualize your data. From basic plots to more complex visualizations, it's a great tool to have in your arsenal. Now that we've covered the basics of NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib, let's see how these libraries can work together in a data science workflow. Let's say we have a data set of student test scores and we want to analyze it. We'll load the data with Pandas, perform some calculations with NumPy, and then visualize the results with Matplotlib. First, we define a dictionary named data containing lists of test scores for math, science, and English for four students. Here we are using the data frame function from pandas to convert the dictionary data into a data frame object named df. Then we calculate the average score for each student using numpy. This line performs the calculation and stores the results in a new column named average in the data frame df. Mean function calculates the average of the values within a numpy array. And this selects the columns math, science, and English from the data frame as a subdata frame to calculate the mean from. Axis equals one specifies that the average is calculated along the rows. Axis zero would calculate the mean across columns. Finally, we use the matplotlib to create a bar chart to visualize the average scores. The output shows a bar chart that visualizes the average test scores for each student. The x-axis represents the student names. The y-axis represents the average scores. There are four bars, one for each student, with the height of each bar corresponding to the student's average score in math, science, and English. This bar chart provides a quick way to compare the average test scores of the students and identify who performed the best, highest average score, and who performed the lowest. As you can see, these libraries can be used together to form a powerful data analysis and visualization pipeline. Whether you're working on a small project or handling large data sets, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib provide the tools you need to succeed. What kind of data would you like to analyze with Python? Whether it's your personal budget, sports statistics, or anything else, let us know in the comments, and maybe we'll use your suggestion in a future example. And that wraps up our deep dive into working with libraries in Python. We covered NumPy for numerical operations, Pandas for data manipulation, and Matplotlib for data visualization. These libraries are essential for anyone looking to work with data in Python, and I hope this video gave you a solid foundation to build on. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more Python tutorials. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in the future, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.